You're listening to the Sam Oye Podcast, the program that uplifts your spirit, renews your mind, and transform your life every week. And now, here is your host, the Reverend Sam Oye. Turn your Bibles with me if you can to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 19 to verse 21. It's a story about Elijah. Uh, Elijah had wiped out the prophet of Baal. I'm reading the pre-verses before. Elijah had wiped out the prophet of Baal on Mount Camel. Chapter 18, there was a contest. Chapter 19, Elijah heard a word from someone who came to tell him that Jezebel was after his head and that she was going to kill him. As a result of that, Elijah took off, took off and began to run. Eventually, he got to a place where God had to speak to him. At that point, Elijah was wishing for death. Because he thought he was the only prophet left of God or left by God. And God said to him that he was yet going to see better days. God said to him, this is not the end of your life. You will yet see better days. And of course, the first thing God said to him was that he was going to anoint Jehu. He was going to anoint Azael. He was going to anoint also Elisha in his stead. And it was after this conversation, God has spoken to him about what he was going to do, that we now come to verse 19. So he, Elijah, departed thence and found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12th, what that means is that we have 12 yokes plowing and Elisha was also involved in plowing with the 12th. Um, when we will start our business and leadership service, our first service, when we will start that, for those of you that are business people, I have some things to share with you if I remember from this. Elisha was a business owner for the fact that the Bible says he had 12 plowing oxen. In our contemporary days, we can say he has 12 different stores or 12 different companies. And the Bible says that the 12th one, he was involved in plowing with that. For those of you that have studied a little bit about the way the Singaporeans do their business and people in Turkey, you will get to discover why Nigerian businesses are not transgenerational businesses. You get to realize why Nigerian businesses always die with their owners a few years after the owner is gone. And the principle is this. The Bible says he had 12 oxen and he was plowing with the 12th. I'll leave that for another day. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with the twelve, with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by him and cast his coat or his mantle, his suit, upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. And said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, go back again. For what have I to do, what have I done to thee? Verse 21. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew it, or slew them, and boiled their flesh with the end of the oxen, and gave unto the people... And they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. He arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Please let me encourage you. You turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 4. 
Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Verse 18 to verse 22. Matthew chapter 4, 18 to 22. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brothers or two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea. For they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they straight away left their nets and followed him. Verse 21. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in a sheep with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And they immediately left their sheep, their sheep and their father and did what? Can I hear you did what? Praise the Lord. Pray for the blessing on his word this morning in Jesus' name. I pray that the entrance of his word will give understanding to your hearts. I pray that tonight, this morning, you'll be provoked enough to move into the destiny that God has preserved for you. In the precious name of Jesus. I want to begin with the story of Ronald Reagan. Anybody know Ronald Reagan here? One of the finest presidents that the United States ever had. The story was told how that Ronald Reagan at his very tender age were made to understand that his auntie one day, his auntie, auntie one day took him while he was very young. She took him to a cobbler because she wanted the cobbler to make a custom made shoe for him. And so when they got to the cobbler, the cobbler asked Ronald Reagan and said to him, Ronald, he said, what kind of shoe would you want me to do for you? And uh, Ronald said, I, I, I'm yet to decide. I, I don't know what kind of shoe I really wanted to do for me. He said, again, sir, I'm not too sure about what kind of shoe I wanted to do for me. Uh, and so the man said, okay, I'll give you some time to think about that. When you're through thinking about what kind of shoe you want, get back to me. And Ronald said to him, that sounds like a good deal. And himself and his auntie walked away from the place. Two days later, the cobbler met with Ronald Reagan somewhere close to a supermarket and said, Ronald, you've not yet made up your mind what's happening. And Ronald said to him, sir, the reality is I'm finding it difficult to make a decision. Whether it should be a shoe with the square toes or a shoe with the round toes, he said, right now, sir, I can tell you which one I prefer. And so the cobbler said to him, very well, I understand. He said, I will get you your shoe tomorrow. Since you are finding it difficult to make a decision, I'll help you make a decision. Tomorrow you're going to get a shoe. And Ronald said, wow, I'm excited, sir. You've taken the burden off my shoulder. The next day, the shoe arrived in the box. And when Ronald opened the box, guess what Ronald found in the box? He found one pair of the shoe having a square toes and the other one having a round toe. I'd like you to imagine what it would look like for me to be wearing a shoe today with a square toe and then one with a round toe. You're going to forget about me and become concerned about my mental state. Praise God. Now, Ronald Reagan... When he saw the shoe, made a profound statement. When he saw that shoe, he made a conclusion. And this is it. He said, looking at the shoe every day taught me a lesson. The lesson is this. If you don't make your decisions, somebody Somebody, somebody else will make them for you. 
If you don't make your decisions, somebody else will make them for you. The reality is, every day of your life is lived to express a decision made by you or by somebody else. In essence, your life is an expression of your decisions or the decisions made by somebody else. For you ladies and gentlemen, this morning, I want to speak to you about decisions as one of the vital forces of exploits. If you are going to do notable things, you must take responsibility for the decisions that you make from today. Speaking on decisions, in the series on the power for exploits, I've spoken to you on the first, in the first part of the series on the need for structure. Get your life, your business, your family, get structured. There's a limit to how far you can go in life if you are not structured. Be organized in the way you live your life and run your family and carry out your affairs. Be organized. Visiting some of your Facebooks and just trying to see what goes on on some of your Facebook is an expression somehow of a disorganized Facebook. Somebody said to me, he said, Sam, I visited your Facebook and he said, the only picture that I get of who you are is someone who is deliberate in what he does. Get structured. Listen to me. The future is reserved for the structured. Get organized. God is about to bless you. Get organized. You ain't seen nothing yet. Whatever it is that you have today, it's nothing compared with what God wants to do in your life. Get structured. Last week, I spoke to you about the breath of God. I said to you, structure without the spirit will lead to frustration. Get the CD and listen to it. Today, I want to speak to you on decisions. You are here because you made a decision to come. And so decisions are a vital part of your life. Your life is a reflection of the decisions that you make or someone else. That's made for you. As we look at our case study, 1 Kings chapter 19, and we also look at the case of Peter in Matthew chapter 4, they were all the stories of two men, two businessmen with no educational background. But we all respect them today because of the kind of exploits that God used them to make. Elisha, we were never told, went to school. But he was a successful businessman. There's a difference between education and intelligence. It's even been proven that most times, educated people don't usually build successful businesses. It takes intelligent, or what they call intelligence quotient. To build successful businesses. Education gives you aptitude questions. Elisha built a successful business. Elisha transited from business to ministry. And did the exploits again. In ministry. My conclusion from the study of scripture is that a failure in business will hardly succeed in ministry. And that is why God hardly calls people from doing nothing to doing something. Everyone that God has called, God has called them from doing something to do something high. Praise God. Please bear with me. 
God has always taught man from doing something small to doing something higher. We also see the case of Peter. How that Peter was a successful businessman. He was a fisherman with a sheep. And he was also called by Jesus to become an apostle. And he did exploits for the kingdom of the almighty God. As I look at their lives, and I want to study why these men were successful. Of course, the first thing I eliminated was the fact that these were not educated people. So education was out of it for me. Then I want to figure out why did these men succeed in their lives. And then I thought perhaps because Elijah had the anointing of Elijah. That is a common thing that theologian will tell you. At another point, I felt perhaps it is because Peter received the anointing of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And the Lord said to me, read that scripture again, my son. And I read the scripture again, and the Lord whispered to my ears. He said, son, the reason for their success is not just the anointing on their lives, but the decisions they made early in their lives. Say with me, decisions. Elijah decided to follow Elijah. Otherwise, Elijah would have died as an unrecognized businessman. Say with me, decisions. Peter decided to follow Jesus. And that was what led to him becoming a recognized global apostle. Otherwise, he would have died as a fisherman by the seaside. In essence, the decisions they both made decided their destinies. The decisions they both made decided their destinies. Somebody say with me again, decision. What is a decision? A decision is a choice between two or more alternatives. A decision is a choice you make between two or more alternatives. Now, in the management world, those who are in the management business world, there's something we call ethical dilemma. In ethical dilemma, you are not dealing with an alternative between good and bad. What do you do when you have two good decisions to make? Which one do you choose? And then you begin to learn about how that your priorities, your values should influence the choice you make between two good decisions. So a decision is a choice you make between two or more alternatives. It is the act of making up your mind about something or someone. A single brother will understand that. Ronke is tall, she's dark, she's beautiful, she's born again. But she's outgoing. Shade is fair complexion, she's tall, she's beautiful, she's born again, but she's reserved. I see brothers smiling. So it's the act of making up your mind between something or someone. I'm going somewhere today. It is a determination arrived at after due consideration. Somebody say due consideration. Don't be spontaneous in making decisions. Oh, there'll be times when you need to act almost immediately then you need to have your mind trained to be able to make those kind of decisions. A decision is the process of selecting from several options and then taking actions. So when it comes to a decision, you will always be faced with options. 
choices. Let me not fail to announce it again to you. Huh. That it is your decision that decides your destiny and not your condition or position. Your destiny is not decided by your condition or your position. Pastor, I am poor because I am born poor. Your condition is not responsible for your situation. There are so many people today in life who are extremely successful. If they tell you where they are coming from, you will shut your mouth up and know that as poor as you think your family background is, there are more poorer people than you. Decisions decide destinies and not conditions of position. If I become a manager, if I become a pastor, if I become a CEO, then I shall succeed. Now listen. Decisions decide destinies and not positions. It is your decisions that will either open or close the door for the great exploits that God wants to do in and through your lives. God is about to do great exploits in and through you. But the decisions you make will decide whether God will do it in and through you or not. Your future is shaped by the decisions you make and not the opportunities or chances you have. Ah. I'll say that again. Your future is shaped by the decisions you make and not by the opportunities and the chances you have. Some have so many chances and never take a decision. Some have few chances and take major decisions. It is those who make major decisions in life that have major breaks in life. So it's not about opportunities or chances. It is about your ability to make the right decisions. The quality of the decisions you make will ultimately determine the quality of the rest of your life. Let me say that one more time. The quality of the decisions that you are making today will decide the quality of the rest of your life. Hey, the quality of life you're enjoying today is predicated on the quality of decisions you made yesterday. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me see if I can give you an understanding. 1964, 1965, 66, 67, 68, 69. Even to the, yeah, so 1950s, late 50s to 60. Singapore was just a little part of Malaysia. In fact, Singapore was dependent on what, sir? Malaysia. Singapore felt at some point that they need to pull away from Malaysia and become a country of their own. That was a very tough decision to make, sir. The British government advised them against it. In fact, the British government threatened them. They said, if you pull out of Malay, if you pull out of what is Malaysia now, if you pull out of Malaysia, we will withdraw our defense uh, support that we give to you. There will be no military support and then your country will be open to attack from all the nations around your region. Number two, they were also taught, told that if you pull out from Malaysia, that you will become a failed state within a short period of time. Lee Kuan Yew. Thank God for that man. Lee Kuan Yew said it's okay. The third thing they told them, they said if you pull out, we will withdraw all foreign aids. You will no longer have aids to live on. 
Lee Kuan Yew said, take the AIDS away. Take the military might away. Take everything away. He said, Singapore shall become a nation. And then he gathered his people together. He said, we're making a decision to build a nation. And then he began to tell them what kind of nation Singapore will be. He said, Singapore does not have oil. Singapore does not have natural resources. Singapore does not have lands. Singapore is a small island. He said, but we'll become a mighty nation. Decisions. When he made that decision, he said to his people, since we don't have land, we don't have oil, we don't have natural resources, can we develop our human resources? Let's make our people to be the best workforce that the world can ever have. We don't have oil, but can we build refineries here? So that nations that have oil, like some, like one of one in Africa, now so that nations so that hunters, hunters that go to the farm and catch rabbit, but bring it home and don't roast it, and let somebody else roast it so they can pay a high price to eat it. He said, let's make the refinery. One of our men in this church just came back from a study tour of Singapore. He was literally almost annoyed. He said, Pastor, Pastor Sam, he was telling me what they see. I think it, we didn't, once a tanker brings raw crude, I think it takes them within 48 hours, they have processed everything and it's back into your vessel, you are gone. What kind of effectiveness and efficiency? Singapore came to study Nigeria to see what our economic system was because they heard that Nigeria was destined to become one of the greatest countries. In fact, Nigeria was destined to be a first world country from the time we gained independence in 1960. Nigeria was predicted to become a first world country by 1978. Ghana was predicted to be a first world country within, 12, within eight years. Of becoming an independent nation. In exactly the time when Ghana was predicted to be an independent, I mean a first world nation, Ghana became a bankrupt nation. It's people selling bonds all over the place. Nigeria began to run into deficits. Singapore, that was yet to be a nation, studying us today, Singapore is a first world country. Nigeria predicted to be a first world country. It's, Nigeria is a wonderful country. It's a something world country. Amen. We're somewhere around the world. Praise God. Why is Nigeria where Nigeria is today? Because of the decisions that our fathers, our presidents, our governors, our ministers, because of the decisions that they made. 2013 is a reflection of the cumulative decisions that have been made since 1960. When Nigeria had no money, we built a Bafemi Awolowo University. Nigeria had no much money. We were able to build the University of Ibadan. We were ranked among the best. Nigeria Naira was competing. With the United, United Kingdom's dollar are pounds. At a point, Nigeria's naira was superior to the pounds. Dollar was nowhere compared to our money. Why are we where we are? Talk to me. Oh, you don't know what they call them? Decision. Why did your family ended up where your family ended up last year? Good or bad? Huh? Your family at the end of last year, whatever was the outcome of your family, is a reflection of the decisions that you made in that house. The one the husband made, 
The one the wife made. The one you both made together. Your decisions crafted your destiny in 2012. Before you start carrying anointing oil and drinking it and anointing it and rubbing your body with it, let me remind you very quickly that beyond the oil, decision matters. You cannot make poor decisions and want to have a rich life. Ah, uh, doesn't work like that. You can predict. You can see. You can predict what the outcome of your life will look like by studying the decisions you are making every day. I'm going to say that slowly. You can predict what your life is going to look like by studying the decisions you're making on a daily basis. The painful part of life is that what your life will become if it hinges on decision, it's painful to realize that God doesn't make the decisions on your behalf. Hey, can I please tell somebody if you care to hear that tomorrow will not be different from today. Tomorrow will not be different from yesterday. Until you change how you make your decisions today. This will be your year of exploits. I said it will be your year of... If it will be your year of exploits, then it must be a year of quality decision making. Did you hear what I'm saying? Oh, but somebody said, but pastor, I've been making a lot of decisions. <laughs> I've been making a lot of decisions. Let me tell you the latest discovery I made about decisions. Please take note of this. I want you to write it down so you never forget it. You have not made a new decision until you have taken a new action. Whoops. Aha. Can you now see why we make decisions and don't get results? Because the decision remains only as what? Decisions. And the proof that you've taken a new decision is that it must be backed up with WhatsApp. Oh, come and talk to me now like child of God. Huh? It must be backed up with WhatsApp. Say that thing very well. What? I want you to hear it yourself. Oh, we backed up with WhatsApp. Actions. <laughs> Let me rephrase it. Decisions without actions is simply an expression of desire. Eh? Decisions without actions is simply an expression of a desire. Because until you take a new action and change your direction, you have not yet made a new decision. Two things expresses the fact that a new decision has been made. One, the kind of action you are taking and the kind of direction you are following. You cannot maintain the same direction and say you've made a new decision. Uh, can I say this? See, what I'm sharing with you, you will need time to sit down, listen carefully. As your pastor, one of my greatest desires is to sit down and look at you all, look at everybody and keep asking God, what is lacking? What is needed? What more do we need to talk about? If you've been in this place in the last three weeks, am I correct? It's almost three weeks now or two. I've been preaching every day except on Saturdays. 
here every day. We meet here. What an awesome thing God has been doing during the fasting and prayer. The things God has been sharing with us. I mean, if you really have been part of it and you know what we're talking about, you want to celebrate God. For delivering such, look at what God has been doing in the fast. Every day I'm here. Every day. Because God has shown me that this will be a different year for you. And you know me, I'm your pastor, I'll tell you the truth. Do we still remain friends after that? Okay, I should change it. This week, you will happen. Let me change what I'm talking about now. Can I go ahead and tell you the truth? Hallelujah. Now listen, I want to share something very powerful. PJ, I learned that very recently. It is this. Praise God. The proof of decision is in the allocation of resources to the decision. Sir, this, if I end the service, I'm okay. I keep wondering, Father, why do your children make decisions and fail? Why? Number one, God said to me, they make decisions, don't back it up with action. Number two, they make decisions and don't change their direction. Number three, they make decisions and don't allocate resources, time, energy, money, research to it. Decisions don't succeed on their own. You make decisions succeed by allocating time, resources, money, energy to making that decision work. I decided, okay, fine. I decided that I'm going to pull out one of the gifts that God has given to me. And one of the gifts God has given to me is to write. I enjoy writing because God gives me the grace to write. Do you understand that? I can sit hours, 18, 16, 12 hours. I sit down and, and God just gives me grace and I just keep writing. Now listen. I can die a failure even though I am a gifted writer if I don't allocate time to my gift. If you want to give Jesus a hand, a hand offering, you better do quickly. Because again, you are beginning to do that harvest house thing. Oh, that's our boy. That's our pastor. Huh? Let, let, me, let me get close to you small. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I've made a decision. Say, I will allocate resources to it. Say it again. Say, I've made a decision. I'll allocate resources to it. Sir, since I made a decision to write, because it's a gift, because if you have a gift and you don't make a decision to use it, the gift is not going to be of help to you. Are you in the house? I don't care to know how many gifts you have. You can have gifts from here, like, it doesn't matter, you just die broke. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, now. So I have a gift, so I made a decision. Is that okay? And that decision is that I'm going to use my gift. All right. And that gift is to write. Is that okay? Now that I've made a decision to write, don't forget one of the principles, the proof that I've made a new decision is that it will be shown in my, the first thing I told you is that it will be shown in my what? Actions. Is that okay now? What that means is that now you will see me doing much of WhatsApp. I'm going to be doing much of writing because that is the action to prove that I've made a decision. Number two, there's going to be a change of direction. Is that all right? Where normally I go around, waste my time with everybody talking anything and all of that. This time around, I'm intentional in my relationship with people and I'm intentional with the kind of time I spend with people and I'm intentional with the kind of people I spend my time with because everybody does not qualify for the gift of access into my life. Period. It's my choice. It's my choice. It's my choice. God commanded me to fellowship with all of you on Sunday. But then he has also commanded me to decide who among all of you here will have the gift of access into my heart. Is that okay? My hands are open. Come, stand up my brother. My hands are open to embrace all of you. Huh? But my heart is open to only a few of you. That again is a decision you have to make. Who qualifies for the gift of access into what? Your heart. 
You can't reward everybody with your heart. No. If it was Jesus would have been a friend of everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So Jesus is the expression of the love of God. Am I in the house? But then when Jesus came to this world, was it, was it with everybody? He fed everybody. He prayed for everybody. But when he came to having close people to him, how many were close to him? Say it again. You don't give everybody access into your heart. The things he shared with the twelve, did he share with the crowd? You see, the problem is that you don't know how to compartmentalize the things you share. Everybody has access to everything. Now, okay, of the twelve also, sir. He shared some things with the twelve, but then when he needed to show some things to some people among the twelve, how many did he take along? Talk to me now. Three, what he showed the three, he did not show the twelve. What he said to the twelve, he did not say to the crowd. And what he said to the crowd, he did not say to the Pharisees and Sadducees. Jesus compartmentalized his relationships. You are not going to succeed the way you are going trying to be a friend of everybody. Pastor, I want to be nice to everybody. Unfortunately, some you are trying to be nice to have a reason. Do you know that no matter how nice you are, some people have made up their minds about you? You are not hearing me. Let me ask you a question. A woman came to me, Papa, Papa, please, this Papa thing, reduce it. Eh? We have Papa here, so... Amen. If you try that. <laughs> now, now, listen, this is what I get. Pastor, 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 Sam, Pastor. Sam. And I'm like, what's it? She's like, Pastor, what have I done wrong? Pastor, I try to be afraid. I try to help everybody in my office. Pastor, there's something that just hit me. I don't know what, I, what can I do again? I said, what are you trying to do? I said, my question to you is, what did Jesus do wrong for them to crucify him? Okay, that's confusing you. What did God do wrong? God is what? God is what? God is love. Am I correct? What did God do wrong to Lucifer? To enrage Lucifer enough to want to overthrow him? What did God do wrong? There are people whose offense is the fact that you are succeeding. See, that's why they can't sleep. There's, you see, and, and again, you are, pray, you are not praying for them. Eh, you never sleep. Why do you sleep? Eh, you are the, why they can't sleep. They are, you are the reason why they can't sleep. Oh. Yeah. You know, okay, I get this medicine. I think you will like a team. You will take this one. I know we oh, are close. Make a pray for you now. Father, give my sister a beloved sleep. Where? Beloved what? Sleep. Sleep. Where? She can't sleep. The only thing that will make her sleep is to hear you are dead. The only thing that will make her sleep is to hear that finally you are broke and that you come begging in a house. And that's it. See, wisdom is not the ability to be able to speak the right words. Huh? I used to think wisdom is the ability to speak the right words. Until I studied a little more deeper about wisdom and I got to discover that wisdom is the ability to know what not to say. <laughs> Can I say it this way again? Wisdom is not just demonstrating the ability to know who to be a friend with. The highest demonstration of wisdom is to know who not to be in relationship with. Jesus said, hey! Peter, Peter, Pastor, yeah, come. Uh, John, James, oh, yeah, wait, wait, come. That's his disciples, so. Uh, oh, yeah, guys, come, come, come. Peter, Paul, James, all of them, disciples started following Jesus. You see, see all these Pharisees. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? See all these Pharisees and Sadducees. See, come. Beware of the 11. Oh. Beware of them. these guys. Just stay clear from their area. I hear them say, Oh, guys, the Lord is with all of you. That's your savior. I'm talking. See how you want to kill yourself? I, I'm a child of God, Pastor. But Pastor, I'm a child of Jesus. The same Jesus you are following called the disciple quickly. Say, Beware of the 11 of water. Eh? Beware of them. See all these people. Did I call you? So sit down there. <laughs> Because you were looking like a Pharisee. <laughs> because they're always suspecting Jesus. I was calling all the ministers. You are the only one that sat back. What were you thinking about? Were you suspecting me or something? Gee! 
Jesus called them and said, Guys, see, wisdom is the ability to know who not to relate with. Not just the ability to know who to relate with because who you, who you relate with is as important as who you avoid. Decisions. Decisions. See, decision. Do you know what, sir? Seeking the will of God will be easy for brethren if only they go beyond Father. Who is the sister I should marry, Lord? Lord, show me. See, plenty is like this. Lord, Lord, which church? Which one shall I marry? Lord, open my eyes. See, Lord, they are confusing me by, by, by. My eyes are doing by, by, by. See. <laughs> Say decisions. <laughs> See, if you change that prayer, look at it this way. To Father, show me who I should not marry you will have eliminated 70% of people you should be bothering about. Show me who I should not marry. Number one, don't marry, yeah? Sister Akwepe, don't marry, Sister Akwepe, don't marry, sister. Do you know what, sir? Oh, sorry, please, for those of you that don't know. The word Pepe is what, sir? Um, okay, okay, let me become a little more. Now, don't marry Sister Peacock, huh? Sister Peacock, Sister it's a peacock show too much oh but if you go inside there's really not this happy cock oh, uh, don't marry sister uh, what's uh, ostrich eh? you know it's ostrich eh? she gets size oh it's an ostrich gets size oh but uh, it's not there also god give you wisdom oh god give you wisdom wisdom god give you wisdom so once once you know Hey sister, be careful of the brothers too. As somebody has, because they say some things are leopard, you know, putting on a leopard jacket. Doesn't mean it's a good mind though. It's a good cloth, but not a good mind. Are you hearing what I'm Why are you still here? You made a decision to stand. That's okay. Please put your hands together for my pastors. So, when you make a decision, the only way to translate your decisions into reality and get the best result from your de decisions is to allocate resources to your decisions. You want to do your masters. Are you allocating time to that? I was sharing one of my little girls that I was counseling. She just came to our church recently. She came to see me yesterday. And uh, we're talking about our financial management style. And, and I said to her, I said, look, girl, you are, you are not organized financially. And she said, Pastor, you are very correct. And I said to her something. I said, look, how about your master's? Do you want to do master's? She said, yes. I said, have you started allocating mass money for master's? Do you know where you're going to do the master's? Which of the universities abroad? You've already, if it's abroad, you've already missed the January window. So the only window you're looking at now is going to be September. Have you applied? Have they taken you? Do you know how much it will cost? You only have eight months to start saving money. Are you a multi-millionaire? No is the answer. If you're not a multi-millionaire, have you started saving for where you are going to? Or do you want this job that pays you 150000 naira to become your destiny? Ah, Pastor, I'm praying. I'm going to do my doctorate abroad. Now, that's a decision. Are you allocating resources to it? I'm going to buy my, house, my land and build my house this year. Are you allocating time and resources to that decision? I'm going to serve God this year. Are you allocating time and resources to that? I'm going to grow spiritually. Are you allocating time and resources to that? Are you buying tapes, CDs? Have you changed your relationships? Or you want to grow spiritually this year, Pastor? This year, I want to be seeing vision, Pastor. By the grace of God, this year, Pastor, I want to be able to... Pastor, I've never seen one angel, but this year, I've decided by the grace of God, I should be able to see four angels by vision. <laughs> Now, somebody that wants to see angel, the only thing you are now, last year you spent 12 hours watching television, and this time you want to see heavenly vision. And television now has increased to 14 hours. And you want to now you see, you are not allocating time to the decision you are making. This year I've decided on some things in my leadership and capacity building issues, I've made some decisions. My wife was shocked. 
she came around me and she she was shocked at the number of books beside my bed and she was like what's going on baby and i'm like don't worry don't worry uh we're doing some what's that reprogramming amen i'm realigning my mind into a dimension that will actualize the decision i'm making you shall understand better by and by praise god so what decision have you made what resources have you allocated to it i need to move quickly so that i can close hallelujah seven decisions that will help change your life in 2013 2013 i hope i have all the time to share all of that with you maybe i'll just share five with you decide to walk with God and walk for God like you have never done before. It's a critical decision. If I'm going to ask some of us here, we're going to be real with ourselves. Are you happy with the way you've been walking with God? Are you really happy? Are you happy with your walk with God? Your relationship with God? Are you happy with it? I'm sure many of us are not happy with that. Now, why don't you make a decision this year, starting from today, that I will change the way I walk with God I will increase my walk with God and I will increase my commitment to walk for God walk for God, walk with God is, is that okay now? make that decision this year now wait a minute if you have been in this church for about three months three months and all you do is to just come sit down somebody cleans the chair for you somebody sings for you, somebody preach for you somebody welcomes you I think you should begin to think of getting involved in also giving something to somebody else. Do you understand? Because life obeys the principles of you down and you're just breathing in. The pastor preach, you breathe in. The ushers usher you in, you breathe in. Somebody cleans the chair, you breathe in. Choir sing for you, you breathe in. Uh, information desk, security people, everything about your worship every Sunday is about people doing things for you and you end up a service not asking this question what have i done to also make somebody else's life better today what have i given back today have you just breathed in without giving out we breathe in service we breathe out service do something this year so many things we can do on saturday sir I'm shocked at the number of people that come here early in the morning. And when I even think of the class, so to say, of the people involved, I'm shocked. People across the different strata of society come here on Saturday morning to come and sweep, to come and clean the place. And they enjoy it. And in fact, their statement is that they don't want to be recognized. They clean the place. Start thinking not just of what the church can do for you, but what you can do for the church. Everybody in this church is significant. Whatever is missing in this church is because of your absence. Whatever you have an eye to see that is not right in the church is what God has called you to change. Somebody didn't get that. God made us all different. Am I correct? He made some of us to be what? Say it again. Some of us are what? Some of us are what? Some of us are what? I am part of the... Ah, it's just that I can also... Ah, praise God. But there are some of us who are not just those who can talk and see. You are, you are purely what, sir? Eyes. The moment you enter the place, you can see what needs to be done, what needs not to be done. Colors that should be matched and things that should not be done together. Am I talking to anybody in the house of God? Now, how can you see that? Enabled by God, gifted by God, to see in order to correct how would you see that and praise god you fool are doing very well here thank you so very much that message was fine i'm going home with what you saw you're going to come back the next week you're going to be seeing it again until gradually what you are seeing will begin to offend you and will not make you to enjoy what god is saying everybody in this house has something to contribute some people are making sacrifices right now to make sure your cars are safe do you understand that 
they are not part of the service they have the car point over there our security guys young men over there they are rendering service some are the children's church teaching your children they don't get into the service only listen to the message on CD everybody doing something the choir come here regularly to rehearse to be a blessing to you when will you do something notable in the house of your God so one of the decisions you need to make this year is to decide to do what sir walk with God and work for God let me close it in I'll share maybe two more and I'll close decide to walk away from whosoever or whatever is taking you away from God and his work decide to move away walk away from whatsoever and whosoever is taking you away from God or his work if there's somebody or something that is keeping you away from God his work why don't you walk away from that this year let this be a different year give action to your decisions don't just talk about it for instance somebody is saying Lord this year I will serve you the best way to put action to it is to walk up to the information desk and ask them please what units do you have in this church or if you don't even want to know what units they are tell them look sorry I like to make sure that I have the pastor editive scripts can pastor prepare a message send it to me on Saturday I'll help edit a script and I'll send it back to him so he can preach a message and we can put it online and all of that that's what I love to do how can we ensure that we have our message being you streamed being streamed live I can do that. I have ICT background. I have this background. I have that one. I'm into interior decor. I can do this. I can, how, you can just walk up there and say, look, I want to be part of this. Why do you need to get involved in serving? In serving? You're going to see that. He said, they that serve the Lord, if you will serve me, you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in what, sir? In pleasure. The prosperity you are praying for. The Bible says, tied to service. stop isolating yourself it is not in the spirit of a new testament for you to be part of a church and you are isolated from the church it's not it's not the call of god acts of the apostle the bible said they were what the church was what together in one accord in one acts chapter three the bible says again they were going out together something about the church is the spirit of togetherness isolation on any ground is not the spirit of a new testament i mean praise god after the service thank you thank you who is running after you it, and you know the funny thing is that those who don't asso associate with people in the house of god unfortunately they associate with worst infidels outside it's funny they do that Get involved. Number three. Let me leave you with this. Decide to carefully, prayerfully, and scripturally make every decision with God's approval this year. Decide to carefully and prayerfully and scripturally make every decision this year. Don't be in a rush to make unnecessary decisions in fact if a thing looks exceptionally good the more you should spend more time they say too good to be true is what sir huh? if it's too good to be true then it's not when something is looking inviting slow up spend time to pray Oh, no, let's make a decision. I've always told you in this church, hurry is not just of the devil. Hurry is the devil himself. Sister, I came to see you. Um, I want you to quickly, you see this business, in 20 minutes it will expire. Sister, let it expire, sir. Let, let it do what, sir? What is 20 minutes? Now, now, I, I'm not supposed to read through it. I can't read through the document. My lawyer can't advise me. My God can't speak to me on that behalf. I can't meet with people who have been in that line before to advise me on such kind of thing. I should jump in and put my money in. No. You know what I love about Daniel? Daniel, when they shared with him the dream and all of that, he says, I give us some time. 
They went back, prayed, and came back and brought result. Learn to tell people to give you time to pray over some things. Somebody say decisions. Our lives are complicated, strengthened, or made better, made worse, based on what, sir, the decisions we make. Isaiah chapter 60, in verse 1. How many of you got it today? How many of you got it yesterday night? From the church. The text from, wave your hands if you got it. Our prayer, text, fantastic. Ra wave it, wave it, wave it. Wave it. Fantastic. If you have not gotten our prayer text, it will be sent again for tomorrow morning. People are praying with it now. If you have not gotten it, make sure you drop only your number at the end of the service at the information desk. We are sending prayer texts out every day. Praise God. Make sure you drop just your number at the information desk. Isaiah chapter 60, I close with that. I want to show you where I close my message on decisions. What is the benefit of decisions? Isaiah 60 verse 1. Can anybody read for me please? Isaiah 60 verse 1. Was that? We're on the screen. All right. What did he say there? Can we read it together? Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Go on, sir. What does it say in verse 2? For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Go on, sir. Verse 3, quickly. Brightness of your rising. Verse 4, sir. Lift up your eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar. And thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Go and sit to verse 5. Then thou shalt see and flow together. Thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because of the abundance of the sea. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. And the forces of the Gentiles. How many of you want to see the riches of the Gentiles come to you? I know. I know. Let me crack a joke. How many of you just want to wake up and discover that Dangote's money has become your own? Ah, ah, my brother. He, he raised his hand seriously. Amen. The riches of the Gentiles shall become what? But my question, sir, can anybody tell me the key to that scripture? Huh? Sir? Thank you. The key Christians, eh? Church people. Oh, hallelujah. Arise and shine. The Lord said, my light has come. The glory of the Lord is... Calm down. That's why we have quoted it and we have not seen it. The key to that scripture is just the first word. Huh? And that word arise is what? It's calling you to what? Calling you to what? To make a decision backed with what, sir? Action. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is the sub. I don't want to go too far. I'm sure I've concluded my message for today. See, whether the riches of the Gentiles will become yours, whether people from afar will come and bless you, whether your glory will be seen, blah, blah, blah will happen. Tomorrow you will get this. Tomorrow you will have that. It all depends on. Say it again. Decisions. And that decision is to do what sir? Arise. <laughs> so I just came to tell you today. That there is power in decision making. When you make quality decision. You provoke the things that scriptures has promised. If you arise. If you arise from where you find yourself now, arise from this low spiritual state, arise from this life of lack of structure and organization, arise from this life of double dilly dallying and all of that. If you make that decision, the Bible says, I will call the riches of the Gentiles to begin to look for you, and people you know not will come and serve you. Decisions. I want to ask you today. Today is not going to be me declaring the blessing on your life without you having a responsibility. Can you please write down or think about three major decisions you must make 
in your life in January in order for 2013 to be a different year. Think about three major decisions. Three major decisions. Something you must begin to do. Something you must stop doing. Somewhere you must go. Somewhere you must stop going to. Somewhere you must meet. Someone you must stop relating with. Something you must start. Something you must stop immediately. If you can discern these two approach to this decision making process and make them. I don't need to read them. You know them. If you do arise, don't let me declare the rest to you. You can start quoting the rest yourself. Pastor Sam, I've taken my decision. Now I shall shine. Now, Pastor Sam, Gentiles shall come to me. Do I need to declare that one? Do your part and the remaining part of that text will be yours. Does anybody understand that? Do you receive that today? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thanks for listening. If you're enjoying this episode and you like to help support the podcast, please share it with others. Post about it on social media. Leave a rating and good review. To catch all the latest from me and connect with thousands of people globally, download my latest app, The Transformers Hub, on iOS and Android. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter at Rev Sam Oye. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next episode.